Anyway, uh, our last reader for today, uh, who is uh, in the almanac, is Julie Foley Coleman. Uh, Julie grew up in West Central Wisconsin. She moved to the Twin Cities in 1980 and has called it home ever since. Julie has had the hobby of writing all her life and is now ramping up her skills in order to publish. She thoroughly enjoys writing and reading because it's a culturally acceptable, acceptable way to explore deeply both the physical and unseen sides of life. She's the author of Piston, uh, Pistol Pack and Mamas, page 218 of the 2015 St. Paul Almanac. So if you have your copy, you can read along, 218. Please welcome Julie. pieces in addition to the piece that I have published in the St. Paul Almanac. Coffee has a certain superpower for me. I see it draw people into quiet moments of intimacy and create an ambiance of camaraderie. Sometimes I wonder how different things might be if world leaders brought this superpower to their round tables. One day, five years ago, I had given up the idea of giving up coffee. I had been thinking that I drank too much of it, despite the fact that sometimes it was the most joyful part of my day. The whole ritual of making coffee, drinking it slowly and quietly, warms my soul before I catapult into a left-brain attack of the things on my to-do list. This day, that day five years ago, the coffee pot wasn't working. So I placed a pan of water on the back burner of my electric stove, turning the knob to access heat. A tiny ember of memory exploded on the scene. Suddenly I realized that for me, coffee is love. Immediately, I was three years old curled in the corner of the farmhouse kitchen, cuddling with my blanket, 11 siblings sleeping. This was mom and dad's only time to be alone together. It was always as if I wasn't there, and that was the way I wanted it too. No other time did I feel their love toward each other, except in those pre-dawn hours as mom packed dad's lunch, as he prepared for his trek to work, and they shared a cup of coffee. My mother, now 90, still maintains a wonderful attitude. Although her mobility is limited as she ages, she still enjoys going on our road trips, Sunday jaunts to wherever we want to go for the day. The story I wrote for the Almanac called Piston Pack and Mamas is about the one of our road trips last year. In it, my mother shares her memories of the years she worked on a Ford assembly line. If there's anyone listening that knows of someone who would have worked on this assembly line, please do contact me by way of the St. Paul Almanac because she'd dearly love to hear what happened to her friends from so many years ago. Now for context for that piece. My first piece took place about 1961, roughly 18 years and 12 babies after her Piston Pack and Mama years. So to get the picture of the era, for Audrey Yanish, it was 1943 and she had recently graduated from high school. Electricity only became available in the rural areas of Wisconsin around that time. She moves from her parents' farm to St. Paul to become what we now know of as a Rosie the Riveter, one in a generation of women joining the workforce to help with the war. About 1943, Bing Crosby and the Andrews sisters made a hit of the country music song, Pistol Packin' Mama. Car tires would still have to be changed out once in order to make the trip from Ellsworth to St. Paul. As my father would tell of his efforts to visit mom in St. Paul during those years. And this was an era when war was in a far off land, but most everybody at home was reminded of it daily, as there was generally at least one place setting at the dinner table, waiting for a son, a father, 
an uncle or a brother to come home from war. Kissing, packing mamas. Commuting to St. Paul for work from Western Wisconsin is a family tradition. My father would carpool up to the cities and work at the South St. Paul stockyards. Years later, my oldest brother and youngest sister would come up for work. I would choose instead to immigrate. I worked briefly at, Saint, at West Publishing while living downtown. It wasn't until my then 89-year-old mother shared details of her years working and living in St. Paul that I began to romanticize this multi-generational trek. Living on Aurora Avenue in 1943 with Aunt Gertie and Uncle Charlie, Mom got hired at the Ford plant in the Highland Park neighborhood of St. Paul. They were paying the highest wage in the Twin Cities at that time. Was it 98 cents per hour or was it $1.23? She couldn't be sure. The women I rode with in the carpool worked on my assembly line. There were 21 of us working around both sides of a long table and I was number three in line. We all worked on the same piston. It was a metal piece about like this. Mom demonstrated for me approximately an eight inch wide by 10 inch deep cylinder for the engine of a transport plane used for passage of troops and supplies in World War II. We each wore a shoulder holster with a type of drill attached, each having a slightly different bit. By the time the piston got to the end of our line, it was finished. Hmm, imagine working on an assembly line. Long hours of repetitious, single task work. I could picture myself with other young single women chatting and laughing and making up rituals to pass that time. I don't remember how we got to be called the Piston Packing Mamas. If that was just something we called ourselves, or if that's what they called us. Our road trip today, it's been a run to St. Paul, sitting now in our car in front of the Ford plant, which is actually closed off with metal fencing. It's filled in with opaque webbing, and all we see is what is visible at the driveway entrance. Heaps of concrete chunks, acres deep into the compound. Only visages of memory in my questioning give mom access to that era. A gray October afternoon, a melancholy mood engulfing us. I decide that pie from Baker Square would be just the thing for the day. So I'm, although mom had been eager for a road trip, it was now three hours later and getting out of the car wasn't about to happen. So I popped into the restaurant and I selected two pieces of pie to go, banana cream and peach. Somewhere on the way home, we'll stop. We drive toward Wisconsin in silence, crossing the St. Croix River Bridge into Prescott. I ask if she wants to take a coffee break and just sit in the car and enjoy our pie. Oh, sure, I forgot about our pie. I pull into the Dairy Queen parking lot. The cloudy sun is still high enough to give us plenty of light for our picnic. When we arrive back at the farm, I help mom into her house. She settles into a stuffed rocker eager to nap. And there were weekends years ago when that trek from St. Paul back to the country commenced with a night of dancing. Today, the anticipation is for the coziness of home. But then again, I guess that always was part of the tradition. St. Paul by day and across the river, home again at night. <laughs>